Hey, and welcome back to the e-learning video series on BSF Biowaste Processing. This module in the BSF Rearing chapter will focus on the pupae stage. After watching this module, you'll be able to describe the process parameters of this stage. You'll also be able to execute setting up and dismantling the dark cage. And lastly, you'll be able to recognize the need for certain data and apply the procedures for the data to be collected. Although this is the longest stage in terms of the, the days in the life cycle, there are not so many handlings that we have to go through to facilitate this stage. In the previous stage, the pre-pupae stage, they, uh, the pre-pupae were added into the pupation crates where they start to pupate. The pupation happens inside crates which are cross-stacked cross into a dark cage. A dark cage here is mentioned as an enclosed uh, material made from a black inner fabric and a white open outer fabric. The combination of the two ha have two main functions. To keep light out and to allow fresh air to come in. The reason why light needs to be kept out is not because it would, be, it would heavily affect the pupation state itself, but it's rather for the effect it has on the newly emerged flies. As you learned in the module on the fly stage, the mating behavior of the flies is activated by light. A dark cage thus prevents the flies from directly mating once they hatch. This helps to focus mating in a short period of time when they are in the loft cages, which helps them to further predict the moment that they will oviposit and we will be able to remove the eggs on, on, at the right time. So eventually, around 90-95% to of the pre -pupi will be evolving into pupae. It's a bit difficult to assess this number because, as I mentioned, this stage happens inside the dark cage and we only measure the yield from pre until fly when we call the emergence, when we call this the emergence rate and which has been discussed in the fly stage. The stage duration is the longest of all stages that we facilitate in the nursery and that we have been discussing with you in the previous modules. A total of 14 days is spent inside the dark cage for pupating which means the transformation of a pupa into a fly, which is also the main activity in this stage. The density in the, um, in the pupation containers is about one pupa per cubic centimeter, and the expected mass range is around 100 to 150 milligrams per pupa. This is a bit lighter than the weight of a pre-pupa, because the, pupa have, the pupae have consumed energy for the purpose of transforming into a fly and are therefore a bit lighter. So as mentioned, because the stage here doesn't require a lot of operations, the number of materials required for the operations are also limited. The items, are, the items required are the dark cage frame, possibly on wheels so that it's mobile, and the dark cage, as previously mentioned, made up out of two materials, the black inner fabric and the white outer open fabric which allows air to come in, but no light to come, to come in. Uh, the big zipper that you see in front of you is to allow the 16 pupation boxes to be placed in here. The pupation boxes itself were presented to you in the previous module. So in the operations, we start by setting up a dark cage. We hang a clean dark cage into the dark cage frame using the four ropes uh, to tie the top corners to the frame. We open the zipper in front of the dark of the cage and close the round tunnel opening on the top. Ensure that the bottom of the dark cage lies on the dark cage frame table. Fill the new dark cage with the oldest 16 pupation containers from the pupation rack. Cross stack the pupation containers inside the cage to allow for ventilation. Make sure that enough open space remains the, uh, between the containers so that the emerged flies can exit the containers. Label the dark cage on the frame with the date code of its setup. After the 14 days, as discussed, again remove the 16 pupation containers from the dark cage as they, have, as they are now only containing pupation material and empty pupae shells. Empty the containers into a dustbin, if present, Remove any dead flies from the dark cage bottom with a brush and dispose of them in the dustbin. Detach the dark cage from the frame and turn the dark cage inside out and wash it with detergent in the washing machine on a 30 degree program. 
Now clean the dark gate frame. Spray the frame with a 95% alcohol solution and spread it out, especially over the bottom where it, where it was in contact with the dark gate and let it dry. Remove the date label from the frame so it can be used for the next dark gate. So we have now passed to the operation. And as mentioned in the beginning, it is quite short. And most of the stays take place as a process of the black soldier fly. We have, we have here the two operations that we passed through in the video. The checklist that you will be, that you have been introduced to in the introduction allows for these two stages to be two separate units. The order of the operation um, is reversed because we have, we first have to remove an old dark cage before we can set up a new one. So we remove the 16 boxes, we empty them and clean them, wash the cage on a cotton quick program in the washing machine and then after cleaning the dark cage frame, we set up the new dark cage and by moving in the 16 pupation boxes into a new freshly uh, set up dark cage and adding the label again to show the date of the new dark cage. For the data collection of this stage, what we do is we note down the number of pre -pupi that go into the pupation box. This is important to be able to calculate later the emergence rate of the flies from the pre -pupi. To still keep track, of the total amount of pre -PP in a set of pupation boxes with a certain date code, we use this sheet where every day you have to add the date of the pupation box and add the number of boxes in total. You will then note down the amount of pre -PP added to each of these pupation boxes in one set, and then you can calculate the total pre -PP per box by looking at the previous log sheets of that pupation box set date code. Make sure though that you always add the same amount of pre -PP to each pupation box in one set. This way you can you can you only need to add one uh, data point of one box because it will be the same for the other boxes in this set. So we're nearing the end of this module. Here are two questions again. First, why does a dark cage use a combination of a dark fabric on the inside and an open light fabric on the outside? It is to prevent light from entering the dark cage while still allowing for natural ventilation. It is to prevent the newly emerged flies from directly starting to mate. Next question. How long does the pupation stage take approximately? Around two weeks. We've already come to the end of this module on the pupae stage. In this module, you learn that the pupae stage in the BSF life cycle comes before the fly stage and after the pre pupae stage. You've also learned that the pre pupae, after crawling out, are placed into pupation crates where they pupate. The pupation crates are then placed in the dark cage where the flies emerge from the pupae. Lastly, you learned about that correct dosing of the pre pupae in the pupation crates and timely management of the pupation crates in the dark cages is very important for proper emergence of the fly. Thank you for watching this module, part of the e-learning video series on BSF bio-waste processing. More information can be found in the BSF step-by-step -step guide, which you can download through the QR code here. Both of these materials were part of the forward project by AWAC in collaboration with the Ministry of Public Works in Indonesia and funded by SECO, the Swiss State Secretariat for Economic Affairs.